Hello and welcome back to Let's Get Your Shift Together. As promised in my last video, this video is going to be about how to deal with a narcissist. And this could be a narcissistic parent, friend, whatever. The way you deal with them all, regardless of relationship, is the same. So first and foremost, I want you to understand that none of this is your fault. And the person who has been emotionally abusing you is an extremely insecure person. And this is a trait, like this is a personality that they have taken on to kind of cope with some sort of childhood trauma that they had. This doesn't mean that we need to feel sorry for them because they did technically go through something and this is how they've ended up reacting. Um, because it is still absolutely unacceptable and just because you're hurting it doesn't mean you have to hurt other people Narcissists don't really have the capacity to see it that way though um, So I mean you could kind of feel sorry for them, but it doesn't mean that you need to engage with them or Try and continue a normal relationship with them because it's just never going to work So the first step is basically understanding that there is literally nothing that you can do that's going to fix the narcissist. So let's think of it this way. Imagine someone's in a wheelchair, they're paralyzed and they have no use of their legs and you want them to walk. That is not going to happen just because you want them to walk. They literally cannot walk. So this is basically the brain of a narcissist. Their brain has been broken somehow and they literally cannot change and will not change because first of all they would have to acknowledge that they have a problem which they will never do a true narcissist will never ever ever take any ownership or acknowledge that perhaps something is wrong with them and if they do it's probably a manipulation tactic so don't be fooled so understanding this is the first step once you understand this and believe it because i understand it can take a while to believe it like i thought i could fix my narcissistic parent for the longest time and I was like horribly disappointed every time that I could not fix her um, and it is what it is so understand that and just really believe that and then you'll be able to cope better with everything else that comes along with it because they can't change they don't want to change you want them to change they're not gonna change it's just not gonna happen number two gray rocking so if you still have to be in contact with this narcissist, gray rocking is a great way to be boring. So the reason it's called gray rocking is because a gray rock is a very boring thing. How can you be a gray rock? Basically, when they ask you questions about your life, you're gonna answer in the most boring way possible. So if they ask you what you did today, you're just gonna say like, oh yeah, you know, nothing. Uh, I went to work and I ate lunch and I went home and watched TV. Like that would be the extent of what you would say. Um, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Like leave it at that. You're not going to tell them anything positive about your life. You're not gonna tell them about any achievements that you've had. You're not gonna tell them anything negative about your life as much as you want to. I know when it's your, like, when it's your mother, it's really hard to not want to have that bond, that like mother-daughter bond or mother-son bond or father-son, whatever, if it's a parent, whatever, it's very difficult to wrap your head around the fact that that bond is just not a thing. The narcissist loves drama, so any kind of information that you give them that's interesting, they will somehow turn it into a dramatic thing and they could end up either sabotaging it for you or turning it into a conversation about them and then you're just going to be disappointed and you're going to be wondering why you even bothered so gray rocking is fantastic so i highly recommend it it's when i started doing it i noticed that like i was being manipulated less and less because i was just so boring that there is no narcissistic supply there and nothing to feed off of. So it's a really, really great way to begin to deal with a narcissist. So gray rocking brings me to my next point that if you don't gray rock, you are going to be provoked. When you get provoked, you say things that you might regret later or you do things that you might regret later. So 
the narcissist, if it's the narcissist who knows you very well, if it's like a parent or a very close friend or whatever, they're going to know exactly how to get you as pissed off as possible. So they could be spewing vile at you and telling you just shit about yourself and how you're such a horrible person in order to provoke you into trying to stand up for yourself. So if you try to stand up for yourself, you're gonna run the risk of having even more vile thrown at you or being called crazy. It would be completely justified for you to lose your shit because narcissists can say some really awful things to you. But once you justifiably stand up for yourself, they're going to label you as the crazy person. So for example, the narcissist could be telling you that like you're wrong or you did something wrong and whatever, whatever, and you end up telling them that like they're crazy they're going to focus on the fact that you called them crazy. They're gonna talk shit about you to other people about the fact that you called them crazy, but they're gonna completely omit the fact that they were saying really horrible things about you to begin with, which provoked you into telling them that you think that they're crazy. If you walk away from a conversation like this rather than retaliate by calling them crazy, you're gonna be the person who walked away and then they're again, instead of talking shit that you call them crazy, they're going to talk shit that you walked away from them. And all that they were trying to do was have a rational conversation with you, but you're the unstable one and you decided to walk away from the conversation and they can only give you so many chances and blah, blah, blah. Like it's just gonna turn into that. So there is no point in engaging with someone who has a narcissistic personality. So that brings me back to gray rocking and why gray rocking is so important. And I mean, it's not like ideal to just kind of sit there and take it when someone's just like calling you every name in the book, but it's like, it's really up to you. Like if you know already that you're going to have some sort of retaliation put on you from it, I mean, it's your choice. Like I can't tell you how to live your life, but just know that walking away, calling them crazy, retaliating is not gonna get you anywhere. Um, it is important to stand up for yourself, but just know which battles to fight, you know? Like there's some, some battles are just like not worth your energy in fighting. So just not giving them a reason to really engage with you on that level is key to avoiding that situation altogether. And this brings me to the number one final way to deal with a narcissist is going no contact. Going no contact is very difficult for some people, especially when it's a parent. Like I completely get it. Going very low contact at first is probably sometimes the best way to go for your own sanity. Gray rocking is helpful to making the step to going very low contact because as you start gray rocking and not engaging with them more and more, they have less and less of a reason to associate with you and talk to you. And this does apply to narcissistic parents too. It absolutely does. Like I, I went through it, so I know. Um, it sounds crazy, but it's true. As you gray rock a narcissistic parent or anyone, they're going to have less and less to do with you because you're just so boring. And eventually they're going to try and contact you less and less and then you can be very low contact. Eventually you can turn that into no contact. So after a period of time of being very low contact, eventually it just turns into no contact and then you can be on your merry way and uh, heal from that. How we heal from that is by processing the emotions behind it. So you can see my previous videos um, on how to process your emotions because I have a bunch of material on that. Uh, but yeah, that's just kind of how to deal with a narcissist. And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear and it's not the um, easy way to do it, um, but it's the most effective way. And uh, yeah, it's just, the honest to goodness truth of uh, what you need to basically do if you want to have some sort of sanity in your life and not deal with a narcissist because 
being made to think that you're the crazy one when you're really not and all you're trying to do is just have a normal conversation with somebody and just trying to love somebody and the you get like retaliation from that it's soul crushing and it freaking sucks like it absolutely sucks like i lived it i know it and um i know that this is so not what people want to hear who are going through it but it's what you need to hear so take it however you want to take it and uh yeah, if you want uh, more information on how to deal with a narcissist or anything else regarding narcissistic abuse, uh, feel free to make some suggestions and I'll probably make some more videos about it. I know this was a heavy one and I know it's a hard one to digest, so I hope uh, you somehow have a great day after watching this. Take care, until next time.